Alrighty, so for anyone who's actually receiving this video or checking it out really, what I'm planning to do in this video is show you guys how to braid your own hair. And this is for people who really don't know how to braid hair. Uh, I know basically, how, well, before I taught myself how to do this, I knew basically how to do a quick little braid with the three strands, the whole just pulling it over each other, you know, that easy sort of thing you can learn to do with a string. Um, if you don't know how to do that, I would recommend doing that first, but if you want to learn how to French braid your own hair or Dutch braid or, you know, braid kind of close to your head, especially in pigtails, uh, then this is the video for you, which I'm hoping to do. So see, this is the basic, basic braid that I kind of knew how to do before. Now, the first thing I recommend people do before actually getting started is wet their hair. I'm probably gonna just get a spray bottle and spray down my hair a little bit before we go through this because it's a lot easier to start it uh, when your hair is wet or not frizzy, not puffing up, uh, and just easier to manage. So I'm gonna go do that real quick. And if you can pause the video and do that, that's recommended. All right. So now that I've gotten at least one side of my head a bit wet, what the next thing I recommend doing is with, with your hair down kind of like this, uh, you should use a brush, whether it's this kind of brush or any brush that you have really. I personally recommend a brush like this, like a comb to separate your hair into each size. It's, I tend to think I can feel it pretty easily and get that done. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, it just has to be split in half so that you don't mess up hair too much. Uh, and yeah, you can either try to do that first to get the same effect that I am gonna be doing, which is the two pigtail braided braids. But if you want to try to take this tutorial and figure out how to make it your own to do one big one, you can also do that. So it's up to you for that. But next thing you do is I always put one half of my hair up because I'm gonna be doing the two. And because I have braid, and because I have bangs that are growing out, it take it's, it's a little bit awkward. So I start really high up in my hair. And one of the secret tricks to uh, doing like braiding your hair or doing a French braid or something like that is you pull from both sides. You pull hair from both sides, right, bottom and top. So I didn't know how to do that. No one taught me how to do that. I figured it out. The first thing you gotta do, you gotta practice this a couple times, is you gotta just take a bit of your hair, usually use your thumb to pull up a bit, and pull and just separate that from your hair. Then you take two fingers and you put them through your hair to separate it into three strands, the three strands that you need for your braid. And this is where you're gonna, you're gonna start every time you wanna do your braid. However, when you're just learning how to do it, Take the top strand out of your hand so you still have the two separated here and you grab just from the bottom so you just grab a piece of hair put your thumb underneath it pull it together and then with your other two fingers you can uh put them in the way once you do that then you can just bring take this finger bring it underneath the top one and pull underneath the hair that you have on the bottom so you do that and then you pull it around like that so you just continue with the braid you just basically keep braiding like normal however you are just going to be pulling from the bottom of your head so now that I got this piece on top I'm gonna go again grab that drop that and go around with my finger twist and go out it's basically you're just pulling from one side uh you know pulling your hair from one side so that's something that takes a little bit of practice but once you get it done it gets to be like kind of a looser braid along the side and it kind of it looks good but it's good to get your fingers kind of nimble and like used to the way that you're doing it uh used to that sort of braiding method uh i'm gonna really quickly go and finish the braid in that way so that I'm not going to bore you with that uh, and then show you kind of what it looks like when it's done. 
Well, I'm in the middle of this. One of the things I will say is that it really does not matter what size of hair that you grab from the bottom uh, because you are going to want to get pretty much all of it as time goes by because you're not going to be able to split it in half as you're going down like we will in the second half of this once you get this kind of under control in a way like you you kind of get you get this committed to muscle memory so it's really not going to be perfect it's going to be kind of loose uh so not exactly what you would expect from a french braid or a braid kind of along your head because this is not quite that yet so while once you get to the end and you have all the hair uh, on that one on this one side collected you just finish the braid as you would normally so just twisting it well twisting it braiding it together and then you can just put your hair tie at the end of it or you can even stop it right at the base of your head it really depends on the look that you're trying to accomplish sometimes i do that sometimes i do a little bun but yeah at the very least you got this part finished and i'm just gonna go to right here you can go as far down as you want you don't have to finish the whole thing but this is kind of how it looks when you do it with just hair being pulled from one side you see how it's a little bit looser uh i may have accidentally done some no this is all just from one side yeah and you could see you could tell because it kind of bends over like that as i go um it's a really good way to get started it doesn't have to be this tight either sometimes it will be like looser sometimes it can go more down your hair hairline like that for me i always just start really high up because of my bangs uh so yeah once you i would just recommend practicing that doing that a bunch of times i uh, whether that's a bunch of times in a row or you want to um do it for a couple days in a row for me it took about a month for, before i was able to uh, braid my hair fully so yeah once you get that done you can go into the next part and don't get discouraged if it doesn't look very good at first or even the first couple times uh, it really does take time to get used to it the most important thing is just to practice it so that you get your hand motions kind of committed to muscle memory or you at least kind of know where you want to place your hands where you want to place your fingers how exactly you want to do that so that you can actually braid it if you don't know how to do a regular braid that is definitely the first thing you should learn um and do that a bunch of times whether that's on your own hair or you do that on a string or something just so you get it kind of you know figured out but for this side you start it pretty much the exact same way i just brushed it out i just had uh put some water in it you start pretty much the exact same way with i usually use my thumb to just separate a piece of hair towards the top and you just want to make sure that all the extra flyaways and everything are not attached to it so you're going to start by putting the two fingers there to separate it into three strands uh, with without bangs it's a little bit easier and once you separate them you can I like to just smooth it out a bit so it's not connected so what you're gonna do is first you take the top piece and you grab from the bottom same way as you did before but then before you actually continue with the braid and, and twisting it and braiding it together you want to grab I usually let it sit over here for a second and then you want to grab a little bit closer. Sometimes I, from the bottom, I will accidentally grab what I want to use from the top, so I'll just separate it, but that is not a necessity. And then once you get that little piece from the top separated, you just kind of connect it with the piece that was hanging over your hand, and then you continue with the braid. And it's a little bit more difficult to get it super perfect on this, on, in this way. But then when you twist it, you get the small piece that you haven't added hair to yet. Grab, grab from the bottom. I like to go through and separate out my hair each time. So you do that. And then before twisting it again, you go back to the top, grab a piece of the hair from up towards the scalp or tor towards where your part is. Connect it with the one that's hanging over your hand. Twist. And smooth out if you have hair like mine that likes to get kind of connected or just tangled up twist you take the piece that was at the bottom I mean that you're twisting and you just grab from right underneath here so basically you're grabbing from right along this part of your hair 
and then from approximately around where your scalp is or where you're not well not your scalp but where your part is uh usually starting from the back to grab that and there you go and that's kind of how you just do it from both sides and that's also another thing that takes practice takes time takes you you learn your own technique this is just how i do it and obviously one of my bangs kind of already fell out it's not looking very good but i'm gonna do this again where i'm not trying to walk you through it while i'm doing it uh so you can kind of just see what it looks like at the end some people find it helpful to look in a mirror when they do this for me personally i have I started out kind of doing that, but because, but I don't know, mirrors kind of just would confuse me sometimes. So I would not really think about the orientation of myself while there. And for me, the start does take a couple times sometimes. I'll go like this. So I just learned kind of to do it based on feel, which can end up looking a lot better depending on whether or not mirrors tend to confuse you. One of the biggest tips I think I can give for this is the best thing to do is just try to make sure that with at least one of your hands you keep track of where each strand is so that you can it, they don't get mixed up or they don't get tangled up together, which does take some time to get used to, I will say that much. Another thing to look out for once you're getting towards the end is you want to make sure that you don't have any real loose hair in the middle of the back of your head and you want to decide whether or not you're going to make your braid super tight so that it really hugs the scalp or loose. For me, I tend to like them really tight, so I'll just, when I have the last one in my hand, really just kind of make sure that it's all intertwined, interconnected, all tight and knit together basically without, you know, being tangled. And then just continue with that. Keep, keep kind of the same pressure. And it's does, it doesn't hurt, it's not really pulling, it's just kind of pressure that you keep on it. And gonna keep that all the way down. All right, so now that I got both sides done, basically this is by far the most perfect one I've ever done. This is, it doesn't have to be perfect. That's the best thing about this, is that you could just kind of just keep doing it. And if you don't like it, just redo it. But if you don't mind it, just keep it. It doesn't really matter. But I finished the bottom on here. So if you see here, you see that it stays kind of tight against my skull. It stays really flat when it's going towards the bottom. On this side, this is the side that we did first, which was just pulling from the one side. And this is when we took the hair and brought it kind of under the braid. That's how we braided it, so the opposite way. And you see how it's kind of, it's a lot looser, it's a lot further from my uh, skull, and it does tend to face forward. However, I think they both kind of have their looks. This stays in a lot longer than this stays in. This will come out much more easily. Um, and part of the reason I didn't specify whether or not you pull over or under uh, is because that is the difference between the Dutch and French braid, I believe. Um, for me, I tend to just pull under because that's what's natural for me. And it really just kind of comes down to what comes naturally for you when you're trying to braid and feel and figure out which way to bring it. For me, it's just naturally under because that's how I braid. So yeah, I hope this is helpful, like literally at all. I don't know if it is. <laughs> I kind of made this for a specific person, but I'm hoping that if anybody else needs something like this, it's a very, very informal tutorial, but if you have any questions, let me know. I'm happy to try to answer them. Um, so yeah, just go forth. Keep trying to keep trying to braid your hair. Take, it takes time, it takes practice. Don't give up on it. And it is a little bit, if you're weak like me, it's a bit taxing on the arms, but you know, you get used to it. <laughs> Uh, and I also, it you do have to like kind of move your arms like that. Like this is the best kind of position for it. Yeah, you, you'll figure it out. Uh, basically just trial and error it, figure out what technique works best for you. Uh, just for me personally, pulling from one side really helped teach me just kind of the basics and like get used to it, 
you know? So I did that for a couple weeks and then I decided, hmm, I'll try pulling from the other side. And I did, and now I can do both sides. All right, I hope this helps.